this is meteorologist Mark Molnar. As always, I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Weather Eastern, all things wintry. That'll be the theme of this video. And going forward here, we'll see if January's broken record that we've already been stuck in from December continues, or if we're going to finally see a breakdown of the pattern and get some snow for those of you that haven't seen it. We'll explore and investigate all of the upper air patterns, see what the upcoming snowstorms have in mind and what locations will be most prone to them. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe down below, hit the bell button so you're alerted when I come out with one of these videos. Smash the like button if you like the video and question or comment down below. I love to read your questions or comments and respond to them. And there are timestamps down below. If you wish to skip ahead, I will not be offended. And in the description down below, there's a link to my winter weather outlook for my whole winter season here. So if you want to view that, that's from December. It's still valid. Let's get right into it. All right, winter storm update here for the Northeast. We're looking at a, uh, this is mainly an ice event uh, going on through parts of northern Ohio, eastern Michigan, and stretching over into the great state of Pennsylvania and upstate New York into northern and central especially western New England here. Uh, this is the winter storm impact scale. Now, this isn't going to be a major winter storm. However, ice, freezing rain, especially across upstate New York into Pennsylvania and western Massachusetts and Vermont, this is mainly a tenth of an inch on average with up to two tenths of an inch above 1,400 feet. This is posting a moderate range scale here with some of the Catskills, Poconos, and into western Massachusetts and Vermont getting upwards of an impact scale of four. So when you get to those two tenths of an inch, you start to get into a high impact, uh, especially during the day on Sunday and persisting into the afternoon. Now the valleys of upstate New York and Pennsylvania will quickly change to rain just after noon below a thousand feet. But those areas that are persisting with the freezing rain will be the higher elevations. Let's get into the particulars here. All right, here we go. We're taking a look at ice totals here across the Northeast for Sunday, January 9th. This is from early morning through late in the day. Uh, the biggest threats here is into the yellow zones. Uh, that's where we'll see about a tenth of an inch on average, especially below 1,000 feet to as much as two tenths in the higher elevations above 1,400 feet. That would include the areas of the Catskills and the Poconos region, especially east of Wilkes-Barre, Scranton, uh, southwest to Albany here, east of Binghamton, and also getting into the mountains of western Massachusetts and Vermont here, those higher elevations upwards of about two tenths, maybe as much as a quarter inch here. I don't think any areas will be approaching three tenths of an inch. That might be a rarity. Uh, there could be some of those higher elevations that do approach that. And outside of this, the pink zone, anywhere from a tenth of an inch or less likely in that pink zone. So these orange zones and yellow zones, these are the ones you have to watch. That include Syracuse, Binghamton, Scranton, Harrisburg State College, Albany region just west of Concord here. So in ter parts of northwestern Toronto here. Uh, so this is what we're looking at here. Ice is going to be the major problem. Valley locations uh, later uh, to Sunday afternoon will switch over to rain starting with Pennsylvania and then heading up towards Binghamton. Areas below 1,000 feet will quickly change over to rain afternoon. All right, snowfall. This stretches from Sunday, G January 9th to Tuesday, January 11th. Uh, most of this snow up here in New England will be occurring with that ice situation on Sunday. So on the northern edge, we'll get anywhere from about 2 to 5 inches here into northern Vermont, northern New Hampshire, and western Maine here. Now this, off of Lake Erie and Lake Ontario, this is associated with lake effect that will be uh, really starting to organize on Monday into early Tuesday. This is where we'll see upwards of 6 to 12 inches. Uh, from Oswego County, Oswego, New York, to the Tug Hill Plateau, northern Oneida County, southern Lewis and Jefferson counties here, and into Oswego County and northern Herkimer County. So these areas will see 6 to 12 inches, especially the northern suburbs of Syracuse as well, up by Clay. Um, and then off of Lake Erie here, we'll see anywhere from 2 to 5 inches locally, higher of 6 inches, not out of the question here, eastern Erie County, Western Warren County, heading into Chautauqua, Catarogas, and Allegheny counties as well. So there is your snowfall map. Outside of this, we'll see a few squalls. Most of this is associated with the lake effect behind the Arctic blast that will be occurring on Tuesday as well. Let's get into the models. All right, before we get into the model data, I want to quickly go into the southeast for your Sunday. This is the severe weather impacts here. There is a slight risk of severe weather starting east of Houston. This is associated with a cold front and a warm front in the vicinity. So we'll have that veering of winds with height 
We will get some afternoon, especially showers and thunderstorms. New Orleans area, Birmingham, just southern suburbs of Atlanta here, Panama City. We could be getting in on the act of strong to severe thunderstorms here, and I'll go over more of this uh, later in the video when we get into the southeastern weather. So damaging wind, large hail, the main threat could not roll out some isolated tornadoes here in central Alabama, Georgia, and central Mississippi near the warm front. That's where we get some of the really intense veering of height with the wind field. So you're going to want to watch out. This could be a severe weather day. Not a widespread outbreak, but enough of a concern to note it here. All right, let's take a look at the models here. We're starting off with freezing rain. This is the NAM 3 kilometer. This is the one we look at for mesoscale in short-term weather scenarios. It's really good going out 48 to 72 hours, especially. And there it is, Sunday, across the northeast. There are some areas getting up to two tenths here, even some indicating as much as three tenths. Um, I don't think this is going to be like a massive... Uh, event that prompts uh, ice storm warnings, but we will be in the advisory borderline uh, winter storm warning in some areas, especially in elevations above 1,400 feet. Poconos, Catskills, mountains here into western New England, um, Binghamton area. The valleys will change over to rain in the afternoon here, so thankfully we'll have some eroding of ice, but um, the damage will be done, especially Sunday morning into early afternoon uh, a tenth of an inch on average to as much as two tenths especially there above 1400 feet heading on into upstate new york vermont and western massachusetts here so there you have it even the poconos down here in the southern uh susquehanna valley sunday morning will be getting on the act of some ice here around harrisburg up to state college and will spare scranton as well so even up here into the eastern lake ontario region we're going to want to watch for this here and taking a look at the surface map, uh, this is the simulated radar heading on with the NAM 3 kilometer. We start with early Sunday morning, and we start to get that freezing rain around Erie, Pennsylvania, Bradford, Warren, into Jamestown, New York. So we have some heavy freezing rain moving in, moderate at times. And that slug of moisture, as we head throughout the morning hours on Sunday, here it is. Very intense reflectivity here. So this is moderate freezing rain in central Pennsylvania into the Binghamton area looking like sleet in this purple zone. And then we head towards later in the morning here. Look at this. This is some pretty intense freezing rain here. So um, definitely looking at uh, a tenth to at least uh, two tenths, especially in the higher elevations here of freezing rain. I uh, think it will be limited to, you know, especially uh, from the I-81 corridor on eastward and northeastward come later in the day. But we start to have the change over to rain here on the back edge um, come early afternoon here. So we progress this in and we have it completely shutting off by the early to mid-afternoon hours, places like Binghamton, Syracuse. But still freezing rain happening here in the Poconos, Harrisburg up to Albany and Concord, New Hampshire here. And sleet further north here into New England. And then you see by early evening hours it pretty well fizzles out with only freezing drizzle and some snow showers left behind here and here we go with the nam for snowfall that's going to be mainly well in the north country here on sunday uh but here it is off of eastern lake ontario and erie uh, not as prevalent here off of lake erie uh the parameters aren't looking as strong but definitely some uh, problems here on the east end of Lake Ontario with those winter storm watches. Uh, definitely getting upwards of 6 to 10, maybe as much as a foot or more here in the Tug Hill Plateau. Uh, heading on into Monday and into Tuesday as well as we get that Arctic blast heading to the south here. So there you have it. This is mainly a lake effect event here off of eastern Lake Ontario and Erie. All right, so let's take a look at snowfall heading out here. We're going to start with the... A euro so we're gonna propagate this out here we go into the middle of next week most of this is lake effect much of eastern canada getting storminess here and not as much storminess out west here uh, we're gonna go into the upper level pattern as well and then you see later on this is towards the 15th the following weekend next weekend we start to see some of the snow really start to fill in so some not synoptic snows to look forward to here this pattern uh, that we've been stuck in with a trough out west and a ridge in the east looks like it's definitely changing here. Uh, let's get into the GFS here, see if it shows something similar. There's that lake effect back east, and then we get towards that January 15th weekend. Not as prevalent. Oh, look at that. 
hinting at some sort of coastal here towards the end of the forecast period. This is pretty far out January 21st, but there it is. Could we have something brewing here eventually? And the Canadian showing something similar here. More snow in the plains there, but definitely a breakdown of the original pattern that we've been stuck in here. So this is pretty interesting. All right, we're taking a look at the surface map here. We're going to look at the wintry situation heading out. Also, the wintry situation in the northeast initially and the severe weather outbreak in the south here uh, for later this weekend. So this entire system, it's all connected here. We have the ice into the northeast. This is for your uh, early Sunday morning. And then look at this. Some stronger thunderstorms already starting to organize here across the south. So this is a very vigorous system. It has a wintry side and a severe weather side here. So we kick this into motion throughout the day, and there you see all those convective lines in the southeast really starting to converge across the central southeast here. Across the northeast, we have that ice finally cutting off, and it becomes more of a severe weather situation across the south. And then we kick this in throughout the week, that Arctic blast coming in across the northeast. Ridge out west, so what does this set us up for? Come the middle to latter portion of the week. Well, we got high pressure, very quiet uh, throughout the week until we get into later next weekend. Clipper heading across the lakes, potential secondary development here along the coastline. The Euro is hinting at something big developing here, 989, 983 millibars by later Sunday afternoon, next Sunday, uh, the 17th. So we'll see what happens here with this. We head with the GFS model. Let's take a look here. So um, this is the uh, Canadian for that matter. Let's take a look. We start off uh, snow and sleet, freezing rain here across the northeast. There's that severe weather component here across the central southeast. We put this into motion. Ice cuts off in the northeast. Severe weather right along the uh, Gulf Coast washes out for your Monday. And then that Arctic front across the northeast. And we put this into motion pretty quiet throughout the week. Let's see what the Canadians showing for next weekend. Yeah, something pretty interesting here. Uh, developing low kicking out of the mid-Mississippi River Valley. Potential pressure falls here off the coast. You got the cold high to the northeast. So definitely something to watch for next weekend. Look at that. That is pretty interesting. We'll have to see what happens here with this 980 millibars. That's nothing to sneeze at. We had with the GFS. Let's take a look. There's that ice in the northeast for your Sunday. Severe weather. There it is across the, the deep south here getting into those convective lines, damaging wind, large hail, and look at that, just snow just behind it. Some stronger cells even making as far east here, it looks like, as South Carolina. Later in the day on Sunday, high pressure, cold high pressure with that Arctic front moves in for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then to the week. Very quiet until next weekend. Of course, the GFS isn't showing much here when it comes to, pretty much showing a strung out front here across the east coast so we'll have to see if the euro and the canadian have are on to something here all right let's take a look at the 500 millibar heights anomalies here this gives us a good idea over the next uh, couple weeks here what's going to happen we'll start off with the euro here there's that ridge in the east starting off doesn't feel like a ridge in the east it's pretty cold uh, starting out your weekend here and with the ice look at that heading into sunday Yes, this is ridging going on here, even with the ice event, because the warm air is eventually winning out. But it will be replaced by that Arctic blast here. This is what you want to see back east if you're into east coast snowstorms. See this ridge developing out west? You see this trough here in the Gulf of Alaska. You see this trough here developing in eastern North America. That is a piece of the polar vortex breaking off here. But we want to see that weaker polar vortex up north. So pieces of it break off and head across the eastern part of North America. That's for heading on into Monday and especially Tuesday, the coldest day of the season by far. Single digits for highs here in much of the northeast and eastern Canada. Lows well below zero. And ridging continues out here in western North America. Look at this. This, well, we start to get into ridging across much of the lower 48 by the middle part of the week, but that will be short-lived. We'll start to get troughiness forming here again along the U.S. East Coast, and there you have it. We're going to have these pieces breaking off, and look at there's that system next weekend. Euro really hinting at some sort of an East Coast snowstorm come next weekend, and that continues as pieces of it continue to form here behind 
definitely an active pattern, and there's some blocking starting here, potentially maybe heading towards a major negative in NEO index here, so blocking potential. Let's take a look at the GFS and see if it shows anything similar here. There's that ridging over the weekend, even with that ice into Sunday, and there's that piece of the polar vortex, that trough really kicking in across the east ridge out west, definitely agreeing with the euro here, and pieces of it continue ridging in the middle part of next week, and then we we'll get some troughiness developing, not as prevalent as the euro, but still hinting at a bit of troughiness here across the eastern part of the continent and we continue with storminess. So even the GFS, which is a little less bullish than the Euro, still hinting that the pattern is definitely there for potential East Coast snowstorms. And look at that ridging out west by, take it with a grain of salt, this is uh, hour 384. Look at that ridging going on here. Definitely going to be an indicator of major troughiness here across the eastern part of North America. All right, Derek Rentschler, Lebanon County, Pennsylvania. Uh, back on January 6th, he saw five and a half inches of snow across his neck of the woods. That was with that system that moved through through uh, pretty much from uh, Tennessee all the way up through uh, parts of West Virginia, Pennsylvania, and into New Jersey and heading off the coast of New England there. So see, it saw a healthy amount of accumulation of snow. Nice capture there, Derek, starting off with a nice snowstorm for the new year. Here we go, and John from the Ice Lip uh, area. This was around Christmas time, seeing a nice white Christmas here across his neck of the woods. Take a look at that. A nice dusting of snow out there on the grassy surfaces and even a little bit onto the roadways there back on Christmas time area. Nice capture there, John. And here we go Sunday across the northeast. We have that warm front pushing into western New York here, uh, pushing warm air up over top this cold air layer at the surface, especially during the morning and early afternoon hours. We'll see ice accumulations up to a tenth of an inch to potentially up to two tenths of an inch in the higher elevations above 1400 feet where that freezing rain persists snow in northern new england probably two to five inches into northern new england there and temperatures will be on the rise we'll start well below freezing the first part of the day and we'll warm it up to the mid 30s places like binghamton albany uh, syracuse scranton area and even up to 41 in boston and the rain wins out in places like pittsburgh and eventually state college where we'll have some morning ice and p.m rain showers potential here. So there you have it. It's mainly an ice event here uh, with a lot of winter weather advisories in effect. And here's where I wanted to get in. I showed you earlier the Sunday uh, frame across the southeast, the severe weather potential uh, for places like Birmingham, the southern suburbs of Atlanta, uh, New Orleans, Panama City, and east of Houston here. Um, we will see the potential for strong thunderstorms, damaging wind, large hail, a frequent lightning, uh, potential flash flooding possible, and also isolated tornadoes, especially closer to that warm front. So you're going to want to stay tuned to the situation. This is not going to be a major severe weather outbreak by any means, but you're going to want to watch and keep an eye to the sky, especially in the yellow zones here of Louisiana, eastern Texas, uh, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, and the panhandle of Florida, especially from about noon all the way up to 8 p.m. here, and maybe even well after sunset so stay tuned here and Monday across the northeast we start to see the beginnings of that arctic front pushing in across uh, northern New England here and we also start to see the development of lake effect snow uh, as well off of Lake Erie and Lake Ontario so we'll start to pile up the lake effect snow uh, off Lake Erie three to six inches and off Lake Ontario about six to twelve inches where the winter storm watches are currently in effect across the region and outside of that maybe a snow squall possible sun breaking out uh, early here so uh, these are a lot of early highs here so temperatures throughout the day will be tumbling as this arctic front blasts in from the northeast and here we go monday across the southeast we're looking a lot less active here yeah we still have the cold front across florida by this time it will be weakening Definitely uh, Bear Clinic Zone setting up here, Panama City 62, but 82 in Tampa and 51 to the north in Atlanta, 49 in Birmingham, 58 in New Orleans. So definitely no severe weather. We're going much cooler here. This is more in line with your average highs here. Still holding on to the 80s in South Florida. And Tuesday across the northeast. Wow. This is where the bottom falls out. That backdoor cold front coming in from the northeast, continuing to progress to the south here. Even only 17 in New York City, 9 in Binghamton, 5 in Concord, 0, the big goose egg in Burlington and Bangor, Maine. 
Only six in Portland, nine in Boston, seven in Syracuse. Even only 26 in D.C. That's the warm spot. 20 in Pittsburgh and 15 in Buffalo. We will have some early lake effect that will be weakening as the Arctic front blasts to the south and high pressure kicks in from the north. So here we go. Tuesday across the southeast, that front clear south Florida really giving new meaning to lower humidity here. 75 in Miami, that is the warm spot. That's as warm as you're going to get. 55 double nickels in Panama City, 57 in New Orleans, only 46 in Atlanta, 39 in Nashville, and look at that, 31 in Norfolk and 36 in Raleigh. So definitely getting cooler here. And Wednesday, here across the Northeast, we are having a warm front push in. So this will feel almost like a heat wave from the previous day. 27 in Binghamton, 24 in Albany. Getting into the 20s, finally, in Concord and Portland. And 30s for Harrisburg, D.C., New York City, Erie, Buffalo. And 40 is the warm spot in Pittsburgh. Maybe a scattered snow shower throughout the day in western and upstate New York, western Pennsylvania, and northern New England. But nothing really to amount to much. And here we go, Wednesday across the southeast. Look at this high pressure really kicking in here, um, really building in. This is going to be on the backside of high pressure, so you'll still manage to make it to 50 here in Atlanta, 54 in Birmingham, and Panama City getting up to 60, 75 in Tampa. Maybe a stray shower or thunderstorm in South Florida as that front really just stalled down there in the Keys and making it up near 70 in Houston. So the warm spot continues to be Miami. Still 40 in Norfolk, but that's better than the previous day uh, where you were stuck in the lower 30s below freezing. All right, the extended outlook for my hometown viewers. Binghamton to Scranton's upper Susquehanna region of upstate New York into northeast Pennsylvania and all places along the upper Susquehanna River Basin. Look at this. We're starting off with Sunday around a tenth of an inch of ice before flipping over to plain rain across the area, especially starting from the valleys and then going up towards the hilltop from the valley floor all the way up to the hilltops, above 1,400 feet. So the hilltops will be the last to switch over. We will manage to make it up to 36 by about 4 or 5 p.m. in the afternoon, but it will stay below freezing up through noon, especially in the valleys. And then we head into Monday. This is where the temperatures will be tumbling throughout the day. We have that cold Arctic blast moving in, only making it up to 22. But look at this for your Tuesday morning, 1 degree, especially in the colder valleys, only making it up to 9. It will feel a lot colder, well below zero. We will only have scattered snow showers Monday and Tuesday before heading on into cloudy or mostly cloudy skies and Wednesday and Thursday with that warm front. Finally make it up to the mid-30s on Thursday. As always, I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Weather Eastern and Winter Storm Impacts. As always, don't forget to give my social media pages some love. Facebook and Media Mark. Also Weather Northeastern and Twitter at Weather Eastern. So web pages, Media Mark com and weathernortheastern.com as always if you want to follow my hurricane page uh, that is hurricane northeastern and don't forget in the description down below there is my winter weather outlook for the rest of your 2022 winter update